Hello and welcome to SAS Bootcamp week three, video seven. In the previous set of videos for week three, we have looked at reading across rows and we looked at the lag function, the retain function, and the first and last operators. In this video, we are going to learn about how to transpose a data set. Transposing a data set means changing the rows to columns or columns to rows or vice versa. Uh, for those of you that have worked in Excel before, I'm sure you must have seen the rows to columns button that's on your toolbar with an Excel. This is a very important feature because in SAS, most statistical procedures demand or require that your data set be structured a certain way. That the data set have certain way of setting up your rows, set a way of uh, setting up your columns, so on and so forth. So transposing data set is a very important skill that you need to learn if you want to be doing health outcomes research. Um, so the most exciting part about this video is that I'm going, I've created some mock data sets of what administrative claims data look like. Uh, and we are going to be working on these mock data sets for the purpose of this video. Let me go ahead and introduce them to you. The first one is a data set called Benny underscore visit. It is similar to the Medicare data sets outpatient visit file. This data set shows you every single time an individual beneficiary, shortened to Benny, um, goes to a physician's office to basically see the physician for an office visit. So in here you have a variable called Benny ID, which tells you the ID of that beneficiary, one, two, three, so on and so forth. And then the date that the visit happened. So this particular individual, number one, went to the, went to the doctor three times on 26th of February 2010, 13th of August and 24th of December. Right? Three different times they went to visit the physician for whatever their office visit need was. Beneficiary three went to the physician four times. So they went and saw the clinic four times on these dates. Beneficiary four on another four times, so on and so forth. We have 22 rows in this column, in this data set. The second data set that we are going to look at today is a pharmacy claims data set. The pharmacy claims data set in Medicare or in most other places really is structured like this. There is a beneficiary ID. So an ID for the beneficiary, just like in that visit variable, visit data set the date they visited the pharmacy and how many days of supply of prescription that they got. I don't have the name of the prescription in there because that is a little beyond what we need for this particular exercise. But we know that, for example, individual one went to the pharmacy five times. Each time they got a 30 day supply of their medication. And these were the dates that they visited the pharmacy. On, right? This is in the date nine format display um, in case you're wondering. So let us use these data sets and look at how to transpose a data set. I'm going to first begin by showing the essential transpose function. This is the most basic transport, transpose. The syntax says proc transport. Remember, this is a proc because it's a procedure, not a data set. Uh, proc transpose data equals class dot. Let's begin by transporting the Benny visit variable. And then you have to add an out option to say what the out transpose data set should be saved as. I'm going to call this visit underscore wide because we are going from a long data set to a wide data set. Uh, you'll see what I mean soon. So you remember what our Benny visit data set looked like. Now when I transpose it using nothing but the essential statements, right? the data statement and an out statement, nothing else in here. Log looks okay. Look at my output data set. So now instead of, let me pull up the original data set here. Instead of having two columns and 22 rows, we now have two rows and 23 columns, right? The first column is a, is a column that didn't exist before. It's underscore name underscore, which is the name of the previous column, which is Benny ID or visit. And then we are followed by 23 columns, which is basically column one, column two, column three, they don't have names, but it's the same information as was provided in the previous data set. The difference there is that this information is provided as a number, it's not formatted to be a date. Let's ignore the formatting problem for now. We can talk about how to fix the formatting problem at a later point in time. For now, just know that you can make this work. Like you transpose this data set from rows to columns, but really this output data set is not very useful. If you want this data set to be, this transpose data set to be meaningful, you need to actually have meaningful column names. You need to not have this underscore name underscore variable, it, it's just too confusing. So let's try and add certain options to this, uh, to this transpose function, which will make this thing a little more meaningful. The first thing I want to do is I want to transpose my rows to columns, 
but I only want to do this within each beneficiary. So I will say by Benny ID. What this by function does is that it will transpose the rows to columns, but it will still hold my Benny ID variable as a column. So that will still be held constant and it will transpose every other variable in the data set. Remember, our original data set had two columns, right? Benny ID and visit. So if you hold a Benny ID constant, you can transpose just the visit column from columns to rows. Let's see what that will look like. So you see here. So now we have one row for each individual beneficiary. And then the three columns, three rows we had for each individual beneficiary because they had three different visit dates, now get converted into different columns. Right? So beneficiary one had column one, 26 February, which was his first date. Column two, second visit date. Column three, third visit date. And now we have a variable called underscore name underscore to tell you what was the name of that variable that was transposed. Right? So, so using that by statement lets you transpose while holding a certain variable constant. And it's a really useful way to do this. Now, what do you say? Why don't we transpose our other Rx claims data set? See how that looks if we use the same um, transpose syntax. I'm going to call this claims underscore while. Uh, and I'm going to use my buy option here as well. Let me open the original data set so we can look at it. By the way, quick note um, is within SAS Studio, you can be, if a data set is open like this, you can still run a piece of code that references their data set and still be fine. But if you were using real SAS, original SAS on your base SAS on your computer, you can't have the data set be open while running that code. You'll have to close this data set before you run it. For now, that's not a problem. Um, okay, so this is what our Rx claims files look like, right? So five rows for the first individual with five different fill dates, but the same day supply for each of the five dates. Let's go ahead and run this. Log looks good. Output data, it's a little messy. Now we have two rows for every beneficiary. There are two rows because there were two variables that were transposed. Variable one, fill date, variable two, day supply. Look here, we had a fill date variable and a day supply variable. Both were transposed, but then they were entered into different rows, not into the same row. And the way you can tell which row is which is using this variable called underscore name underscore. Right? And then we continue to have uh, columns like this, but they're all named COL1, COL2, COL3, not very meaningful way of doing this, but we managed to transpose both the variables in the data set while holding the Benny ID variable constant. Let's, let's try and refine this a little bit because I, I don't think this is uh, very useful yet, but there are ways to make this better. You can use the VAR statement within proc transpose to basically tell SAS which variable you want to transpose. When you do this, SAS will only transpose the fill date variable, it will hold the Benny ID variable constant and it will ignore every other variable in the data set. In, in our case, there's only one other variable, the, the day supply variable, and that variable is just going to get ignored and we're going to transpose while holding Benny ID constant and we're going to only do the transpose on the fill date variable. Log looks good, output data. So now we are back to, because we only transpose one variable, we are back to one row per individual beneficiary. So Benny ID one has one row, Benny ID two has one row, three has one row. This is much more meaningful. This is how we want to see our output data set usually. Um, we know that every column is fill date because that's the only variable that was transposed, but our name and underscore name underscore column basically tells you the name of that variable anyway, just so that you have confirmation. And then we continue to have the COL one, COL two, COL three names which are not very pretty. So why don't we go ahead and fix that next? The way to fix that is to add something called the prefix option. The prefix option actually goes on the first statement within proc transpose. And you can tell SAS what you want the prefix to be instead of COL1, COL2, it can be something else. In my case, I want the prefix to be fill date. So instead of COL1, COL2, it will be fill date one, fill date two, fill date three. So you get more meaningful variable names. So here we go. This is the same data set as we saw earlier, except now the column dates are a little more sensible, right? So this is the first fill date, second fill date, third fill date, fourth fill date, so on and so forth. Now, some individuals only had three fills, so they have missing values for the other columns. 
some individuals had uh, seven fills, right? So they had values for every single one of the seven columns that we have in the data. So this is one thing you can do to make the data set more meaningful. The next option that I want to explore is the name option. The name option basically replaces that ugly column that which is underscore name underscore. Uh, it, will it will replace that with whatever you want. In my case, I want to say replace it with the name transpose one. There you go. So now instead of underscore name underscore, this variable has a more appropriate name if you will. It's transposed variable, transposed VAR, and it has the same value as earlier, just looks a little better now. Um, the last thing that I want to create in your, that I want to show here with proc transpose is how to use the ID option. Let me show this using a separate, um, using a separate proc transpose. Thing. This is the same thing as earlier, except instead of having the by variable where we are holding the Benny ID variable constant, I have an ID variable. Let's see what this does. Excuse me, I think I've got a typo going on here. Um, oh, I need to check, excuse me. I know why that happened. I'm sorry. This ID option only works on a wide data set when you're going back to a long data set. And I'll explain why that is in just a second. Okay, there you go. So, so what is happening here is that um, we are now using the output file out of this data set, this, proc, this procedure claims underscore wide. Let me pull that up so you can look at it. Okay, so this claims wide was the transpose version of our first uh, Rx claims data set, which has basically one row for every single beneficiary, right? One row for every single beneficiary, followed by as many fill dates as you can. Uh, each fill date was in a different column. Now, if you will transpose this back, using the proc transpose, this is what you can get, right? So what is happening here is that each beneficiary is now in a different column. And this happens because we transposed it back, but we use the ID variable to basically say, pull this, pull this variable and add each of these rows into a different column. And each of these fill dates become values of this variable in that column. So, so here you have, so Benny ID one, here are all the fill dates for Benny ID one. This was exactly the opposite of what we saw earlier, right? So we just transposed back, but we did not transpose back to where we began. We transposed back to this place instead. So there are several ways to transpose these data sets. I will let you all figure out how to use the by option, the ID option, and so on and so forth. You might have to play around a little bit to get to what you need. Uh, a little bit of practice with transpose uh, couldn't hurt either because that makes things a little more simple. But I will go ahead and show you guys the final proc transpose and what that can look like. So let's say I want to transpose the Rx claims set into days underscore y because this time I want to uh, transpose my fill uh, days of supply variable prefix equals days underscore supply by Benny ID. So I'm holding Benny ID constant, variable days supply run. This is the most common prop transpose syntax that I use because I'm often wanting to transpose rows to columns, but I also want to hold it constant for a beneficiary because um, in most statistical procedures, you do not want beneficiaries report, repeating across rows. Now, this is not true for every single statistical procedure, but in most procedures, you only want a beneficiary to have one row per each unique individual, and then you can run statistical procedures on that. So I'm holding the Benny variable const, the ID variable const, I'm using the by statement, and I'm using the VAR statement 
basically tell what variable to be transposed. So here's my Benny ID, one row per individual. Here's my day supply variable, then day supply one, two, three, so on and so forth. Uh, when I do this, I usually go on and drop the name column because I already have the right variable name for each of the subsequent columns. So I'll go ahead and drop this one if I need to uh, in the next data step that I'm doing. So that's your proc transpose uh, that will show you how to transpose data sets from a long to a wide format or a wide to a long format or vice versa. That concludes all of the content we have for week three. Uh, in the next video, I am going to share the homework and the exercise and we'll actually go ahead and solve the exercise as well.